Welcome back, listeners, to another episode of Frequency 43. Um, you know, thank you for listening with us today. Um, we've got some very compelling and interesting topics to talk about. And do you want to start us off, Lucas, or should I start us off with um, the first thing we're going to talk about? Uh, I think you got it, man. All right. So, really killing it actually out here. Right. So, I've been listening to some things on YouTube on self improvement. And ultimately, I've been listening to some stoicism. And what, what that is, is truly the path to be happy. Um, if you don't know what stoicism is, you should check it out. Very interesting. Very interesting. I don't, I'm going to be honest. I forget what stoicism is. Okay. Okay. Well, if I. Okay, so if I had to put it... I forget what stoicism is. Right, 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 right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Let's be honest. To all you listeners out there, you all forgot what stoicism is because you're stupid like us. But <sighs> um, if I had to put it like most simply, it's, that it's, it's a philosopher's mindset. And on here, you have everything you can't control, right? Time. Uh, were you born with two loving parents, um, how much, you know, your fi finances for your family growing up. So like everything is here, you cannot control. And everything here is what you can control your individual choices on a daily basis. So what a true stoic would do is divide what you can and cannot control. Because I think a lot of people in life are like, um, there's, I mean, and there's so many reasons to be stressed out and stuff, but a, a majority of the reasons people are stressed out is a lot of the time it's the stuff they can't control. Now the path to enlightenment um, would, would you would have to distinguish that first. Right. And then now here's where it gets a little fun. Okay. So we have this term in stoicism called eudaimonia and that's the, it's basically happiness, right? Now, so you have you have this little side, everything you can't control, time, like, you know, everything you can't control. Right here, if you make the right decision, so this is everything you can control. If you make every single perfect decision, then you reach eudaimonia, right? So, like, you woke up today. What was the first thing you did? First thing I did when yeah. I woke up today? Yeah. Um, or on a normal. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. I took a fat rip this morning. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. So, so, right, but so that honestly, was, so it gets me. It gets me going, man. I'm not. Gonna, I'm going to be right, honest. I right. feel like for me, that might be my 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 right first step of the day, man. I mean, it got me because I had a good day, man. Right. So you woke up. My my point is, you woke up, and you had the decision to either take a bong rip or not take a bong rip, and you chose took a bong rip because. It makes you it makes you happier, or you know you love to do things when you're key. Start I don't I don't know your really. situation, but ultimately from the decisions that you can control, if you pick the right one, it'll go down a little little path, and then if you keep doing it enough, you will reach eudaimonia. But ultimately, you you will never reach it because you'll you'll fuck up on on a few mistakes, but. I mean that's that's stoic that's stoics. I mean check it out. Very interesting. Um but why that's did very I very interesting. Yeah, so why did I look into that and stuff? Well I looked up on YouTube what what makes someone happy because um I mean I just think we live in a society right now where um We live in a society. Where most people aren't happy, right? Because we we have these chimpanzee brains. I'm like well, I'm comparing myself to your fucking filters on Instagram. And it's like, well, I don't, you know, like it's, 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 it's so soul sucking. So yeah. what do you think? Right. So yeah. Oh uh, yeah. I know. Talk Sorry about, about the listeners. We talk way yeah, too much about that. We talk about um, I guess what I'm going to ask you is what do you think makes someone happy? Dude, Jordan Peterson was the one to really seal it for me, or I mean, or at least should show me like an example of like what I or how for me to like achieve some happiness. But Jordan Peterson says that it's just all about personal responsibility and um, doing enough, doing like 
putting enough burden on your chest to like push yourself but not break yourself and like become a better person out of it every day mm -hmm. try to like learn and improve from your mistakes i so really you, like that you think, mindset you think responsibility and happiness are correlated personal responsibility 100 percent. yeah interesting 100%. i mean yeah. I, for me i think there's there's probably five things that go into happiness number one physical and mental health uh, number two, relationships with whether that's a significant other, husband, mom, dad, friends. You got to have some strong relationships. Um, next one, I would say you got to have some sort of short-term goals in, in, in a real long-term goals because that's going to – those goals will justify all the shit that goes down in life. So, I mean, those those core things, I'm trying to think of something else, like maybe – struggle a little bit you know maybe try and and not always be super comfy and love you know what i mean like for i've been taking a few cold showers recently and obviously i'd rather have a warm shower than a cold shower but i think when you when you take a cold shower or you choose um uh, any sort of path with more struggle i think it's so much more rewarding after you're just putting off the gratification for later Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying if you do that, it'll make you happy, but if there's no struggle at all, then how, how, if there's no struggle, I just don't think people are going to be happy, yep. but you get to choose the struggle, right? You get to choose the path mm -hmm. of, of <clears throat> whatever, but yeah, I don't know. I'd love the to see more important. People. The most important burdens in life are the ones that you put on yourself. Yeah. Life's going to throw, throw, throw wrenches at you every step of the way. And it's like, you know, are you gonna, just going to let them keep throwing wrenches at you? Or are you just going to, are you going to pick up that wrench? And are you going to fucking screw in a fucking bolt, you know? Yeah. I've screw heard... in a bolt with the wrench, man. You know? Right. I don't, is that I'm the dodgeball? Is that in dodgeball? Is that in tool. dodgeball? You remember dodgeball? If you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. You can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball, yeah. Yeah, okay, but but to your point, though, I mean, I think, I mean, life is going to throw a lot of shit at you, and and I think almost 90% of it is your reaction to it, right? Mm -hmm. Because you could you could have any sort of information, but how the the reality of, of what's happening in your reaction can be two completely different things. And I'm not saying, oh, something bad happened, so you get to react positive because, oh, if I react, you know what I mean? But I guess it's like, well, there's going to be some problems in life. Um, are you going to complain about it? Or are you going to be reactive and, and conduct some sort of solution to the problems? You know, I mean, this is what, this is what JP talks about all the time with um, uh, what's the, what's the dragon with all the snakes on it? And then you, Medusa, right? So if you, you cut off one snake and three more will appear. Well, that's just the same thing. That's a metaphor for life. Yeah, that's, of a all hydra. The that's a hydra. Medusa right, is the, the Greek. The Greek yeah. Okay. So, so ignore the, the Medusa, but think of, <laughs> think of uh, a dragon and all these, and all these snakes and you cut off one snake and, and three more appear. Well, that's just, that's just, that's brushing your teeth every single day. That's stretching. That's exercising. That's, you know, you, you've got so much stuff you should do, but we put it off, including myself. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think you got to attack your goals and you got to take your goals pretty seriously. If you want to be happy. I mean, I know for me, I've, I've been lacking tremendously on that and um, I have suffered a little bit through it. Um, and I haven't been as happy as I wanted to because my goals, I think they're too high right now. And I, I think I should lower them so I can meet the expectations in maybe one or two months. And then that would be better. But I mean, I don't know. I think being happy is completely subjective um, to yourself because what could make me happy could make you miserable. What could make you happy could make me feel like shit you know I, I i don't know what do you think <clears throat> i think we kind of got to take a step back here and like define happiness before we start throwing it around right 
that's true you know like happy how you know like what is happy being happy you know like i i 100 percent just agree. that serotonin dopamine that goes into your uh, brain when you get that jewel rip or is it like it's, nah, it's not you know it's gotta be uh, like because it's a feeling right it's not no one's gonna be happy forever right you're, you're what you're doing ultimately is you're just you're just chasing that fix of life, you know, but it's a real, you know, this is, this is not through a jewel or some sort of drug, right? This is, this is you meeting your expectations for yourself in the future and, and being grateful for it because you did put in all this hard work. And I think that's where the happiness comes out. But I mean, going back, right. What, what is happiness, right? Mm -hmm. Comparable to joy. Um, I think we use these sort of terms like happiness and, and gratification and mm -hmm. and a like we all we, like button. Yeah, and 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 I think it's so much more complicated than that. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, it's um it's a pretty big question because it really comes down to like the meaning of life, man. It's like you could have all the money in it because money is not, you know, you should, you shouldn't be like pursuing money and fame. You should be pursuing happiness, you know, but for some people, money and fame brings happiness or for a lot of people. Right. So, so or at least my... you think, you think it'll bring happiness, but in the end, you know, you, it could not be what you wanted. Right. So from, from my experience, I found um, people who, go for status, money, and, and fame. Um, I've kind of got the feeling they didn't get the attention they wanted growing up. So they, they're, always, they're always seeking for that sort of, I'm in the spotlight, like love me, mm -hmm. like all this sort of stuff. When, when really you, once you learn to love yourself, learn to love your flaws and, and your strengths and, in your mind, I mean, I, I think that's one of the most peaceful things in the entire world. Um, yeah. But touching back to money, right, is like, well, you need money, right? Everyone needs money, right? This is that's just the way society goes. But once, once you reach that certain threshold where you can pay the bills and and all these sorts of things, um, I think it's not as important, right? Because what you're doing with money is ultimately you're buying a service or some sort of material, but guess what? You can't buy that feeling with money. You know, like you, you go buy something um, for a hundred dollars, right? Well, it's going to feel great right when you get it, but that's only going to last a certain amount of time. And I think that's ultimately the problem with, with all these material possessions is like, we have these large houses stacked with all these things we're buying and stuff, but um, I don't think it's fulfilling at all. I just think it's like, Oh, I got more stuff than you. So I'm higher on the food chain than you yeah. because I got more stuff. And we've really lost our connection to like mother earth, you know, mother nature, you know, we're, we're, we're just a part of this planet. You know, we act like we own it, but but um, we do own it. We do. I know. I would. I um. Here, here's what I gotta say about that. I mean, I think that people have had a tremendous disconnection with nature recently. That can lead to serious depression, man. Yeah, undoubtedly. I mean, I've. I mean, we've both gone on multiple hikes this this summer, and. I mean, I can tell you, bro, when you're when you're moving like one foot in front of the other, and you're experiencing that little bit of leg pain and stuff um it's to be really goal, upset and but sad. the goal is the the goal bro going that hike to the top of mount diablo it's just such a good analogy for life man that whole experience was just like you have a goal at the very top and it's like what are you gonna do to get to that goal you know, there's nothing stopping you but yourself, you know, and like mm -hmm. a lot of people can't get to the top, man. Right. Um, I had a buddy of mine who's pretty athletic, got to the top of the mountain at Mount Diablo and he quit. He was like, I'm, I'm not going back down. Um, 
which was, I mean, I going hiking, it was just like, come on, there's only one way down. Ultimately he calls his friend and he drives up to Mount Diablo to pick him up. But, um, I mean, I think you gotta, there's certain times just like that, just like that hike in Mount Diablo. Like if this, if this shit is what you are here to do, then, then do it, you know, like, <laughs> like if, like you got to find that. I mean, and this is something I'm looking forward to pursuing in my own life, but you, I'm, I'm trying to find that, that thing and just that, that feeds me and then just do it and be the best at it. Because what, what, what else are you going to do in life? You know, because like, you only, you only got so many days. You, find that sacrifice, man. you only got so many days, you know, yeah, like sorry. it's tough. It's tough. We're so young right now, man. So young. You think, I mean, yeah, the average American is 37. I know. I know. We're young. I worked with old people all summer, man. We're so young. So young. I know. We just got to <clears throat> utilize the time we got here, baby. Yeah, I mean, time is a weird is a weird thing, right? You cannot take it back. You cannot do anything with it. It just it's just like a it's just like a wave. It's just like a it's a wave. I mean, that's why I have such a such an interest in in surfers, right? Because I mean, like when they when they ride that, I, I mean, I swear because the. The way I see life, sorry if I'm sounding a little uh, all over the place, but I see life as like a wave, you know, like you're, you're just right. You're riding the wave of time. You can't go back. Mm -hmm. The wave, the wave is going to knock you down and, and you got to get back up and get right back on the wave. I like that analogy. Yeah. Does that mean that there's other waves of time? Nah, one fat tsunami wave. One fat tsunami we're, we're wave. On, time. Well, until I mean, we're all we're all on the same clock right now, right? We're all spinning. The Earth is this. We're spinning around the sun at the same time. Well, what's I mean, to say that before the Big Bang, Big Bang was the start of the wave, right? Because that's where time started. Yeah. We can't really, we don't really know anything that happened before the Big Bang. So like, what it, there could have very easily been another another wave the the big bang could have been the end of another wave in the beginning of our wave right so i mean that's that's what it i mean um when you look at um true life um philosophies i mean you look at yin yang contraction retraction um so how does this reflect to the big bang okay well the big bang happens everything separates and stuff and then, yeah, eventually, and then eventually eventually it comes right back because when when things get cold it they they come together and then when things get hot they spread apart so we have the big bang right mm -hmm. boom psh, super hot lava we're in the sauna it's hot right now Ooh, it's getting kind of chilly it's getting cold and then the universe and, contracts yeah back into one similarity yeah, huh? yeah that's that's and my take on that's it that's the explosion of the other big bang huh yeah. So it's, so, I mean, and look at, look at this as like a wave, right? So you're on the beach. Okay. The wave is going up <sighs> crashes. Oh, it's going back. It's going back. And then there's a new wave, you know? So maybe, mm -hmm. maybe the world in our universe is just um, a big bang and then it all comes back. And then another, I mean, I don't know. Don't, I'm not a physicist, but I'm allowed to have hot takes and that's my take. And then you got to like, what about sleep and time? Like your whole entire perception of time gone, your whole perception of reality gone for like nine hours, dude. It's like, in, if you don't go to sleep, you, you go insane. Like, that's so crazy to me. You know? Right. I mean, I, I've listened to some podcasts on um, Navy SEAL uh, boot camp. It's also called BUDS. Um, what they do during their hell week is they deprive them of sleep for the entire week. I think they get three hours on, on one day. I'm not hundred percent sure. 
But I mean, I, I couldn't have said it better myself. When you're sleep deprived, your brain is just on. It's it's like the subconscious. And your perception, your perception yeah. of time when you're on like certain things is like different. Like especially like Adderall. Like, yeah, I took a I took an Adderall. I don't condone the use of Adderall to be honest. But I took one and it it fucked me up. I couldn't sleep on it. Yeah. It and has just, our it, brain going like an energizer bunny. Yeah. It's Literally, weird. And then but it's but it's it's so crazy. It's such a pharmaceutical complex, dude. We're so we're so trapped by our fucking like our own greed, man. Like the pharmaceutical complex is something else I mean, like get all of these little kids addicted to all these fucking all these fucking substances all these fucking like Adderall and antidepressants and stuff it's like instead of you know maybe eating some fruits and vegetables yeah, go for right. a run and but who's who's gonna make money off fruits and vegetables and who's gonna make money off fruits and vegetables off the pharmaceutical <laughs> industry bro <laughs> then your doctor is no, telling you that you have to take it and it's like right i trust doc you know but right i mean i think i think we have a tremendous problem with uh depression right now and i mean it's been said that exercise is is more valuable than um what's it called benzodiazepines which is like xanax and, and all those sorts of things mm -hmm. it's a serious problem in America yeah right now dude i mean like, I'm, i mean how many times do i gotta talk crazy. about it because when we were when we were hunters and gatherers, I mean, you didn't have a choice. You're like, Lucas, you got to get up on those two feet and we're, we're walking mm. that way. The tribe's go Lucas, the tribe's going that way. Okay. Now you yeah. can, you can move your two feet and start walking and, and no, move or with us or behind. yeah. Or you're going to get left behind. And I, I mean, you know, when we talk about depression, I think that's a, having the whole idea you of kind of the school system will kind of like shovel you through it. Yeah. Like you'll get tagged along even though you won't really get anything out of it emotionally. Yeah. And I, I think a true fundamental problem with depression is that we are so <laughs> developed as a society where we, I mean, America is all about the sovereign individual, right? What does sovereign mean? Sovereign is just a fancy word for freedom. So freedom individual. Okay. That's it's what America cool. is. It's kind of, sorry, sorry. No, you're it's, good. It's kind of cool that we're talking about depression now because we were just talking about happiness earlier. Yeah. Like, what hey, is it's depression? The, it's the yin-yang, bro. Of, it's, lack of it's, happiness. Yeah. It's... Mm -hmm. I just thought that was kind of cool. Yeah. Isn't, isn't that funny? Um, it's whack because I know a lot of people. I mean, and I don't think I've ever, I mean, I've been sad. I think everyone gets sad, but... You can't have I, unless you yeah and, and unless or not sadness is inevitable right because people are going to betray you um just don't play the victim's mentality when that happens because i mean that's that's life right don't get attached to anything because all of this is just it's it's temporal it's not going to last forever um but we were talking about depression right mm -hmm. Um, I think something interesting about that would be just people aren't being proactive about, about it. You know, I know a lot of people, no, I don't, but I, I'm assuming I know a lot of people who are not depressed, but they're not happy. And the saddest thing is they're not doing anything about it. Right. Mm -hmm. Because I mean, what did we talk about before we talked about, well, there's going to be problems in life. And you got to find solutions for those problems. So let's say Lucas is not happy right now. Well, shit, man. You're not going to get, yeah, little frowny face, little frowny face lib is not happy. So I don't think, I don't think you're magically going to just be happy by sitting in that chair. I think you got to really dig deep in and figure out what's, what's causing this sadness, right? Is it, is it something that happened five years ago? You know, was it some sort of traumatic event? Was it, oh, like this happened to me and, and now I'm super resentful. And then 
I ate shitty food and I'm doing all these drugs and now I'm in the spot. Well, that's life. You know, you make mistakes. I've made mistakes. You've made mistakes. Accept them, move forward, create a solution for it. Mm. What's the solution? Well, it, it helps. subjective, you know, it's going to be different for every right, person. Right. Because know? there's no formula. The which formula is why science is kind of cool, which is why science is kind of cool. And which is right. why humans are so we don't follow, you know, humans follow basic, like we all like need water and love and there's hierarchies and needs and everything psychologically. But, but um, every person at the core soul is different, you know? Yeah. So we have it. Every, yeah. Deep down everybody's you know solution to finding happiness or something is going to be different you know it's going to be their own thing you know but there's there's like i said there's certain things that you can you know like that are known to increase happiness just by putting serotonin and dopamine in your brain like mm-hmm. running eating vegetables eating healthy you know that's just the foundation right that is the that is the foundation i feel like you know like yeah. if, you're, if you're building a house right <clears throat> this this house is your life or, or something well are you gonna are you gonna build the house on some like mud that's not you know it's are you gonna build it on some you know, how are you building your house you know what do you want a strong like concrete thing you want i don't know I, the analogy is not spot on. I'm sorry. No, it's a good analogy. It's like okay. you, you're you're fucking you got your base, your very base of happiness, yeah. which is food, safety, comfort. You know, um, being part of a tribe. We're all fucking that's what I'm, oh, I love that. Um, and then you got like your second, your walls. You know, so like that was the foundation. Now you got your yeah. walls, which is like personal, close, like relationships and mm-hmm. like maybe a girlfriend and like, and then there's your roof, which is your sacrifice, man. Oh, really? I was going to, I was going to say the the trophy room. room. I was going to say the trophy room is your sacrifice. No, it's the roof, man. It's the roof. Because it's the top. I like that. Um, yeah. Build a good foundation. Um, I mean, I think we, we touched points on like happiness is different for other people, um, things you can do about it. Um, I mean, we've talked about this before and so many times on the podcast before, but I mean, I, I can't like we, Yeah, we, we talk about this a lot. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you don't... Can we talk about the Titanic real quick, man? Yeah, let's talk about the Titanic. I love it. Um...